Hello and welcome to After Journalism. My name is Meg Adams. I am an owner of my own media production company, which I'm going to get to. I'll tell you about my background in a little bit. I'm also an associate professor of journalism and PR and marketing, and I teach video production, so a little bit of everything. But today I'm going to hopefully help you learn how to reframe your skills for either other fields in communication or if you're someone who wants to take those skills from journalism, and like I did, and start your own business. So hopefully this is going to be a really helpful webinar for you and we're going to dive right in. Okay, so the structure today for this workshop is we're first going to talk about really grounding your brand, if you will, um, or your, your skills in storytelling. I'm going to talk about why I think that's important and how you can do it. I'm also going to review some issues or places where I've heard both students and clients that I work with talk about where they're getting stuck when it comes to making that leap, specifically from journalism to PR, or where they're feeling frustrated in trying to talk about their skill set, whether it's in an interview or when they're out with friends or on those job materials is probably where most of our minds went there. Then we're gonna obviously kind of talk about what, what you can do instead, how you can work on that. We're gonna do a little bit of an actual workshop time. So I'm gonna ask you to do some work today while this stuff is fresh in your head um, to get that momentum rolling for you so you can begin actually doing this work. And then we'll talk about some potential next steps for you if you wanna dig deeper uh, and continue sort of working to think through your next career step, where you wanna land. Okay, so I am, you, <laughs> I'll just say this flat out, I'm like super skeptical about people on the internet, but I have come to see in the past year how wonderful it is for making connections with people and like the beauty of that, especially on social media. So maybe that's where you heard about me. Maybe you subscribe to my newsletter or I have a Facebook group, Sisters in Storytelling. I'm also highly active in the TV to PR group. And so I wanted to give you, though, just some of my backgrounds so that you understood, like, where I'm coming from and why I feel confident in sharing this information with you today. So I have successfully transitioned out of journalism into higher, head, into higher ed and then into owning my own business. So I left journalism after three years in the business as an MMJ. Um, like many of you, I was frustrated for a variety of reasons that I don't think we need to go over, but I made a decision um, in my life that I wanted, honestly, just a very different lifestyle than what I was going to have in journalism, but I loved, loved, loved telling stories. Um, it was something that I wanted to do since I was like a little kid. Like I wanted to tell stories. I was always on the school newspaper. I actually did like the... Um, we called it the student communication network in high school where we gave the video announcements and stuff. So, but anyways, I left the field and it was not an easy decision. So if you are there right now, you are contemplating making that shift. Like I totally understand all the emotions around that identity, right? And that identity shift. I did make that leap. I went back to school in higher ed. I went back because I thought I was going to be a high school English teacher because I loved writing and storytelling and I wanted a better schedule. I ended up um, being mentored through and earning a PhD in rhetoric and writing in 2015. During that experience, I was actually able to work with an interactive documentary with a bunch of other grad students that went on to win a Peabody, was featured in the New York Times, won a World Press Photo Award. Like It was an amazing experience. It changed everything for me. After that experience, I gained that confidence that I needed to think through how I could take the skills that I had in journalism and use them to create my own media production company. So my partner and I started that company six years ago. We are hiring our first employee. We hired our first employee this year and that business just continues to grow. And again, that is all from both of us were former journalists. So the skills that we had in journalism got me my job in higher ed, also got me my job, um, allowed us to create this business. So what I've learned over the course of the past almost a decade out of journalism is I have seen people really miss amazing opportunities. And this goes across like journalism. And this is just people switching careers in general because they weren't speaking to their skill sets. But I think this is especially valuable for journalists because you all have some pretty amazing skills. Like, trust me, 
everything that I talk about when I teach in a classroom or pitch to a client literally stems from the three and a half years I spent as a journalist. I think the hardest part of transitioning out, and maybe that's where you are right now, is reframing that skill set or beginning to think I, I say more deeply on the slide, but I also think this is part of like thinking outside of the box about what it means to tell stories in a different field. Like how's that gonna translate, right? So maybe that's where you're at and that's particularly what we're gonna focus on today. Okay, so I think you guys knew where this was heading. If you are looking at the job ads, if you are talking to people in communication, you know that it is all about storytelling, right? You need to start framing your work as storytelling right now because this transitions across almost all communication industries. Everywhere, people know and have known for, it's been like the past five or 10 years, people in marketing have talked about the power of storytelling. They've talked about brand storytelling. What is that, Megan? That is what you do every single day in journalism when you put a face on a story. It's first person narratives. Like finally with social media, people are starting to see how powerful that is to move people emotionally. And so, you know, all you're doing is shifting that skill set from creating something to tell the public, right? Which we say is objective and unbiased, but we know is not. If you can join one of my classes. <laughs> I talk about this all the time. I also like digress, but it is all about storytelling. Essentially what you're doing when you move into PR or marketing or any comm job really is you're storytelling for a brand. So it's just a slight shift there, but you are already doing it and you are really, really good at it. So start framing your work as storytelling and start curating your personal brand now. So what do I mean by a personal brand? I mean all of your social media handles and bios, where especially if you are not on LinkedIn, like get on LinkedIn, rewrite your profile, start framing yourself. If you could be storyteller, you can journalist, storyteller, add that somewhere to your bio and begin to think through all the skills that it takes to frame yourself as a storyteller. So that's one thing I would do right away. Like right after this lecture, I would think through or workshop, I would think through how am I going to change my social media bios, but also when I say a personal brand, because we're all, we're all kind of personal brands, especially when you're on the job market, you want to think through how you're curating that and how you're curating that in real life. So it really is kind of back to what I said in that, that previous slide. It's an identity shift for you. It's moving from journalism to storyteller. And I think that's the first step that you can use to really start to make that, that leap or that shift, right? And so you can start thinking that through in ways that you are not only talking to people, maybe it's, here's a good chance to practice is maybe you're seeing family and friends over the holidays and sometimes that, you know, those chit chatty conversations will venture to, oh, yeah, like how's work going? You know, you can start, start to practice like framing what you do as storytelling as opposed to journalism. We're gonna dig a little deeper to that in the next slide here, but just stick with me. Okay. So you're like, oh, okay, I've, I know, I know I need to reframe my skill set, but here's where I'm getting stuck. Maybe you're not seeing the whole picture, right? So this is what I typically see when I'm working with journalists specifically who want to transition to PR. They are talking about their skills in a way that only other journalists are going to understand, right? They're not speaking to other fields. This is a pro this is also problematic, I just want to say, for people who are switching from like PR to marketing or even from different jobs within the communication field. And here's why. Because as these fields become more specialized and maybe you're seeing this in the job ads, they're starting to everybody talks about something in a different way. So I'm going to give you guys an example of this. I routinely pitch to clients with my company. I'm like the person they send in, I'm, I'm the CEO technically, so I go in when, when we're pitching. And when we first started working, we were using the term digital storytelling. And we were talking to mostly small business owners across industries. <laughs> Paused for effect. You guys are probably like, no. No, it did not translate. Like I started realizing that when I was speaking to people, they're like, what, what is she, this, okay, like, 
they're asking me to spend a whole lot of money on digital storytelling. When I switched from saying digital storytelling to your business messaging, it's like, ding, everybody, everybody gets it now. Now, when I sit and I talk to a marketing team, right, because we have, we have sat in with bigger clients who have a whole creative team in-house, and I talk to them and I say, hey, we do digital storytelling, particularly video production, you know, this brand storytelling, boom, 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 they get it. They're 100% usually bought into that because they understand. So I told you those stories to say, this is what you need to think about as you're creating your resumes, um, thinking through your cover letter, thinking through what your social media bios are going to be, thinking through, again, how you're presenting yourself and the skills that you have. So the first tip here is like, think about your resume through the eyes of a PR manager. Do you know somebody in PR? I know a lot of you came from that TV to PR group. If you're not in there, like you, you could ask somebody to look at your resume for free. Send it to me. Like I'll be happy to look at it and kind of tell you maybe where these red flags are. But if there are people in there, again, who are in PR or are hiring, if you have anybody in your circle, that's who you want to look at your resume and tell them, like, don't be like, hey, look at my resume and give me feedback. Be like, hey, am I speaking to my skill set in a way that translates? Do you understand why this is valuable? So I usually use, I tell people to use a little equation, if you will, that's like, okay, tell me about your skill set and then tell me why it's valuable. I'll use an example. So in a lot of journalist um, resumes, I see the line shot or responsible for creating daily packages, VOSOTs, and VOs for nightly newscast. Like, no, nobody is going to understand that NPR. They don't know what that means. So maybe that shifts from that, from that, what I just said, to responsible for creating one minute to 30 second personal, you know, narrative driven stories that reached 70,000 plus viewers in my market, in my market they don't, again, DMA might be something that is, could still be foreign depending on like what job you're applying for. So there you go. This is a skill. The value is I've reached this level of an audience, right? Start tracking. If you are doing digital stories, track how they're getting hits on social media. Like these are things that you can put in there with like 90,000 views or whatever. I mean, you know, maybe 300 views, whatever. Like you, they know that you know how to create a story, right? To my first point. So that's point number one there. Point number two, you might be trying too hard to make your skills fit into the box uh, related to a particular specific job ad you're referencing as you prepare material. So this is like the flip side of that. This is where you're just like, I've seen people just try to specifically talk to every single bullet point in some of these marketing and PR ads. And let me tell you, they're looking for unicorns. Like I think that they understand and the industry is shifting just like journalism is shifting and evolving so is PR and marketing and so you're gonna see a lot of job ads calling for like a ton of things that might be a red flag um, especially if the salary doesn't match what they're asking you to do but also I just want to say here it's okay if you can't do all of those things yet um, if you start seeing as you're looking at the job ads themes pop up like I know one that I've been seeing a lot with clients is um, analytics people want people who can read SEO and analytics maybe you go take um, a HubSpot training, right? Or a Google Analytics training or a class with me, which I'm gonna tell you about in a little bit. It's just so you have that training and, and you can then say, add that line to your resume if it's something they're looking for. Maybe that's something you can do at work. Maybe there's somebody already at your job who's a digital content creator who runs those analytics or somebody in sales. Like, seek that person out, ask them to share their knowledge with you, put that line on your resume, help them out. Maybe do a, a special project. So. There you go with hopefully that's where you're getting stuck. If there's anywhere else that you're getting stuck that I didn't cover and you want to shoot me an email or find me on social, I'm at Dr. Meg Adams. I'd love to have this conversation with you outside of this space as well. Okay, so what you can do instead, enact storytelling now. So start thinking about, I literally just went through this. As this is fresh in your mind, maybe you pull up your resume, I want you to just pause this video and I want you to set a timer and I want you to take the next five minutes and I want you to write down all the skills that you have that would be storytelling, again, this brand storytelling or you know that you think relate to PR and marketing that you've gained as a journalist. And I want you to turn off the no voice in your head, okay? The voice that's like, oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, that's not gonna translate. Oh, this isn't perfect. 
No, just write it down. This is, this is a brain dump exercise to get that out on paper. Here's a few that I came up with when I was doing this. Um, obviously, video production, writing, meeting deadlines, finding multiple angles to every story, right? Sometimes we got to be real creative with those stories as a journalist, especially as an MMJ. Um, then I said, you know, like relationship building, like highly observant, seeing an issue from multiple perspectives, content creation, all that stuff. Just list that down. Pause the video and take five minutes to do that right now. Okay, you're back. How did that feel? Hopefully really good. Um, again, if you got stuck at this part, please feel free to email me. Uh, we can hop on a 30 minute call or I'd be happy to kind of help you think through these next steps. You can shoot me an email as well. Um, I'm at Megan at homeplacecreativeco.com or at Dr. Meg Adams on Instagram is where I usually hang out, but I'm on Facebook too. So I'd be happy to chat through any of these if you've had any issues at this spot. Okay, so the next step, this is the fun part. Um, next step sort of think about the experiences that you had or the stories where your skills became solidified. So the next step for clients I have would be to take a note card and write down, um, select essentially seven to 10 skill sets that you think are the ones that are most meaningful to you or the ones that you think translate best into these PR marketing and comm jobs. So then what I want you to do is write the skill on one side of the note card, flip it over on the back and think about the time or the experience where this skill became solidified for you. So these don't have to be giant moments. Maybe it's the time you won an Emmy for this, maybe, or maybe it's just like the thank you card you got from someone or how you changed their life. I mean, whatever. Or it can be something simple like the time you had a difficult conversation with a, you know, a, a fellow employee to build a relationship that would speak to like internal corporate communications, right? So again, I'm just going off the top of my head here. But I would suggest that you do these cards when you do them, do one a day. Like don't try to sit down and do them all at once because the point of this is that you are prepping yourself not only to have confidence in making this transition, which again, I've been there, so I know how difficult that is, um, but so that you are comfortable and confident in telling these stories in the cover letter, in your resume, in your job interview, but also when you're out with friends. Like maybe, again, it's family members, friends. You don't know who's gonna give you your next job. Every single one of my positions and most of my clients have been through serendipitous relationships that have happened um, unplanned, right? So, and I think as you get better telling these stories, again, like I said, naturally that confidence is gonna grow in you, but you might make those connections. This is like the beauty of true networking is, um, not networking to like chit chat for what you're gonna get out of somebody, but really networking to find the people who you have similar interests, values uh, with, and that you can build genuine relationships with. So having those stories handy, just kind of knowing, so you're not caught off guard when you do get that chance. Th these cards can help you do that. So share them, you can share them. Also these make for great social media posts, like people always relate to these. Maybe you've seen me share some of these in like the TV to PR group and stuff like that. Um, but this is, a, every time you speak your truth, you're kind of practicing and telling these stories, but you're, again, in this way, you're, you're framing them. My PhD is in rhetoric. Um, you're framing them in a way so that they're more prime to land, if you will. And you're also enacting the storytelling and a lot of the communication skills that most people are gonna be looking for, for someone in, in public relations, which is all about relationship building. So. I hope that this helped. Um, please do these steps. Um, I'm excited to hear from you. Let me know if this was helpful. If you don't mind, I'd really love to hear back from you um, with any feedback that you have about the webinar as well. Even a quick two minute email would be great. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about today is um, a course that I developed called Creating a Story Brand. So you can see across the bottom here um, what this course entails. I'm really excited about it. So. This course is essentially, I know that again, being a journalist, I think you, I created this course because I essentially for you um, and for business owners and entrepreneurs who are starting their own brands from scratch. So 
this course you can see everything that it covers but it's not like an online passive learning course it's a very active course we are going to meet once a week sometimes twice a week we're going to have writing workshops just like this one that are very hands-on together so you'll get to not only work with me as you learn to create a story brand but you also get to do this in a community of other women who are in the same space as you um, why I think this is helpful to you. I think that you all have content creation down. I think most news producers, especially news reporters, you guys know what you need to do. What is missing is how to tell stories, as I mentioned, for a brand. That is a little bit of a shift, and that's something that you're just not going to get in journalism. So I've created this course um, based on essentially our graduate program where I teach and our undergraduate program. We have what's called a capstone project. And this is where students actually work with a client. And I've walked some of my clients through this too um, to essentially create a story-driven brand for a client. So the other component of this course that I am really excited about for you all is that I would ask you to, you don't have to, but I would highly recommend that you work with a client as we go through the course. This could be a nonprofit, a small business, maybe it's a friend. There's always someone out there who needs help with branding and will take free help. So that way, as you learn about the concepts that we're talking about here, um, all of these brand guidelines, all of these things, um, you'll be actually actively putting them into action, and then you'll have a very beautiful portfolio. So if you're out there and you're thinking like you're kind of lacking that confidence, you want to be prepared for your first job um, in marketing and PR, maybe you don't want to take those entry-level positions that are paying you about the same in journalism. Maybe you want to move up to a more like management role, like this is something that you can say that you did. And again, you can have not just to say I did some online course, you're going to have actual work with a client to show. Um, and so I think this might help you kind of skip past what those job ads say is the two to three years experience, if that makes sense. It's a kind of a way around that. And also it helps you avoid going to get a master's or something, um, which I don't think that you need, like I said, because I think you have the content creation down. So, uh, or again, if, you, if you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought about creating my own business or side hustle based on journalism skills, you can totally do that too. Trust me, it's, it's really fun, really fulfilling, and also pretty lucrative. So um, if that's something you're interested in, please feel free to reach out to me again. Send me an email. We can hop on a quick 30-minute phone call to see if you would be a good fit for this. Um, and I can send you more information about that course as well. So again, I hope this was helpful for you today. Either way, I really hope that you are able to, in the next year or whenever you're ready, like I hope that this has helped you at least have like a way to move from, I, I wanna get a job in PR marketing, maybe you've sent out some resumes to, I'm feeling really confident, at least I now have some steps that I can take to get the momentum going to find that next uh, step in your in your career. And I hope that it's really beautiful, um, beautiful for you. So have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching.